Hello, my name is Sean Agakani and I will be covering Kangaroos Mating and Mate Choice. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is going to be a amazing experience and I hope you learn as much about kangaroos as I did. The kangaroo is a large marsupial found in only Australia. Okay, um, they are part of the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, class Mammalia, infraclass Marsupialia, order Diprotodontia, suborder Macropodiformes, and family Macropodidae. There are four, four main species of kangaroo, and the red kangaroo is the largest of those species and therefore the largest living marsupial. They may reach 1.8 meters in height, which is incredibly tall when they are standing, and they are powerfully built with reddish-brown coats in males and blue-gray coats in females. And they typically live in Australia. Okay. So you see we have a very buff-looking, intimidating, alpha male kangaroo in the picture so classification of the marsupial otherwise known as the kangaroo um, is starts off with the great kangaroos which are it's a family of kangaroos considered to be the main ones um, it's in the family macropodidae subfamily macropodinae and the species can contained in this um, subfamily family are the western gray kangaroo which has three subspecies the macropus giganteus which as we know is the eastern gray kangaroo macropus antilopinus is the antilopine kangaroo and the macropus rufus the red kangaroo Amongst other marsupials are the tree kangaroos and rat kangaroos, uh, which all fall under this um, classification, as we see on the right, Animalia, Bilateria, Deuterostomia, Phylum Chordata, Subphylum Vertebrata, Infraphylum Natostomata, Superclass Tetrapoda, Class Mammalia, Subclass Theria, Infraclass Metatheria, Order Diprotodontia, suborder Macropodiformes. Okay, so you should definitely memorize this very important information. Next slide, we'll be covering characteristics of the kangaroo. As you see on the right hand side, you have a very cute mother kangaroo and an even more cute baby kangaroo in her pouch staring at the camera and wondering what is going on. So some of the characteristics of the kangaroo, we'll be focusing on the red kangaroos, uh, eastern kangaroos of that sort. So they have muscular tails, strong back legs, large feet, short fur, long pointed ears. The females have pouches on the anterior portion uh, containing mammary glands where the young are kept uh, until they are ready to leave. They are also herbivores and they are mostly active at dusk to dawn and forage for food at night. So what we know is that like many other herbivores, kangaroos have a complex digestive system that allows them to regurgitate food, which can then be broken down to remove more nutrients, which is a process known as chewing the cud. Kangaroos, as we said, are typically active at dawn or at night and spend most of the time looking for food. The habitat of the kangaroo uh, is mainly mostly in Australia. Basically you won't find them anywhere else other than the continent of Australia. Though each species of the kangaroo has a different place it likes to call home, um, most of them or the the grey kangaroos, they live in the forests of Australia and Tasmania. On the other hand, we have um, the antilopine kangaroo who can be found in the monsoonal eucalyptus woodlands of extreme northern Australia 
and the red kangaroos we see that live in uh, mostly central Australia. And fossil evidence states that as early as 5 million years ago, kangaroos and its relatives originated in Australia, which at that time, um, Australia had moved close to its present location due to continental drift, and it was not connected to other land masses. So therefore, kangaroos um, stayed in Australia and were not um, moved elsewhere, did not get ge geographically dispersed. The habits of kangaroos include living in social groups called mobs or herds. They groom and protect each other from danger and their source of or their form of locomotion involves hopping. One of the only marsupials that hop or only mammals that hop as a form of locomotion. They also um, have springy hind legs and strong feet which can cover up to 15 feet in a single hop which is ridiculous. They can also move as fast as 30 miles per hour and their cruising speed is 20 miles per hour, um, which is about how fast we go on residential streets, which is pretty crazy. So use, they also use the tail for slow walking as a third leg, okay? So they're not hopping around all the time, they kind of waddle around and use their uh, hind leg. So communication also, I want to uh, touch up upon, upon the communication of the species. So male kangaroos, for example, make a hissing sound and toss their heads before beginning to fight, which is possibly a way of warning other males to get ready. Um, Eastern kangaroos communicate with each other using a gentle clucking noise and will cough when alarmed or angry. Um, they also have other forms of communication like stomp, stomping on the ground or um, they also possibly uh, they use chemicals to communicate like most other um, species of mammal. So as far as mating choice goes, the kangaroo has a polygonous mating system meaning there will be one male who will mate with multiple females and that one male is usually the strongest male with the most reproductive success. The male usually uh, approaches the female, sniffs her cloacal region and occasionally her pouch opening. Uh, young or mid-sized males may be aggressively rejected but with dominant males the female usually just move away if she is unreceptive and that is usually the end of it unlike with humans where this most likely is not the end of it it is rare for a male to touch or grasp an uninterested female she is very respectful of the male kangaroo they get a clear picture of what they will be getting so as we said earlier the alpha male is the one who is in charge so they form a dominant hierarchy system where the male exhibits or the alpha male is seen to exhibit mate guarding so if another uh you know little kangaroo man male wants to come around and try to get his woman he won't allow it and he will be very angry about it so they have an intricate courtship process which we won't go into too much detail but we did a little bit earlier um, and of this kangaroo species the red kangaroo show the least complex process the females usually incite the male male competition which is uh, again it's a given considering the males fight for the female and to be in charge and we see that to be successful in breeding it's the male must keep checking widely because it, um, it has to see if the female is receptive and a sign of that is usually the female urinates when being checked and the male performs um, a phlegm which occurs when the male sniffs the urine and or puts his nose in it he then shakes his head and with a lord and stretched head strongly sniffs again basically this action these actions continue and eventually the you know kangaroos mate or they don't mate
นะครับอ mating of the red kangaroos continued so as we said earlier the alpha male is in charge and the way it battles for the female is it rubs its chest on bushes or grass it stands on its toes and tail tip make some growling noises and get ready set go the fight begins for the females okay or if the non alpha male wants to go ahead and be sneaky it can avoid the alpha male avoid fighting because it can be very dangerous as you see there's a very buff alpha male who can kick some serious butt if he wants to so what it does is it goes sneaks around finds a receptive female kangaroo and does the dirty when the alpha male is not looking okay um, so the benefits of this is are many it increases genetic diversity mixes up the gene pool reduces chances of inbreeding and gives offspring a distinct advantage that they may not have had with the other male kangaroo okie dokie so as we see we have the sneaky males behind the female kangaroo checking to see if the coast is clear and if the non-alpha male approaches the female checks around see everything is good and the female accepts then they make the great success and they have a uh, kangaroo babies and the alpha male will never know so some adaptations that the kangaroos um, port uh, portray are the reproduction pattern varies according to whether their territory is experiencing good bad times drought or if a drought has broken so they are very well adapted to the environment also um, adaptations for mating include uh, body attributes such as forearms or bicep size in the kangaroos as we see the buff kangaroo uh, is the alpha male and he's the one leading the packs and the females want to mate with the very buff alpha male um, which is very very interesting and they are opportunistic breeders so in good times there's a high chance of breeding so if the weather is good and allowing then they will breed and they will continue to breed throughout the year good conditions mean milk is not essential so the young can feed off the land and um, they don't have to rely too much on the mother's milk but if conditions are not good then the mother's milk may dry out and for very young uh, kangaroos this means that it's going to be they can't survive which is very sad so they have to have support of the milk or else they soon die but at the same time if there's another young inside the pouch feeding on the mother then at the same time the blastocyst for example let's say the mother the mother has an embryo inside her uh, or there's a baby being made uh, their blastocyst is an embryonic diapause that means it's paused until um, basically that the baby kangaroo inside the pouch is ready to move on and come outside the pouch come outside of the closet and live life and then uh, embryonic development continues which is also very very interesting form of adaptation that the kangaroos have and there we have it here are my wonderful references we have uh, some scientific articles at the bottom which I gathered my information from and thank you so much